So how can we transfer a large volume of data from relational databases or enterprise data warehouse to Hadoop in an accelerated pace using multiple threads or parallelism? In this video, I will be giving you an overview and introduction of Apache Scoop, advantages of Apache Scoop, as well as I will explain the architecture and general workflow of Scoop from relational data transfer perspective. Hello folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data, Hadoop, virtual reality, augmented reality and cloud computing. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So what is a Scoop? Well, it's an open source command line interface application which can import bulk data from relational databases like MySQL, SQL Server, as well as data warehouse systems to HDFS, as well as export data from Hadoop file system to relational databases. It gives us a capability uh, either import all the tables of a database or single table into HDFS. It's a Hadoop ecosystem technology which offers schema on read and parallel data transfer and hence transferring data at a faster pace due to parallelism uh, capabilities. Data can be imported and populated to hive tables in the structured form only. Scoop supports uh, data sources which are JDBC compliant, but for the data sources which are not uh, JDBC compliant, Scoop architecture supports various connectors or plugins, thereby providing the capability to connect with several other external data sources in that case. So whenever we submit a scoop command on command line interface, then scoop internally generates a map reduce code to transfer the data. Scoop makes use of a primary key column to divide the source table data across several map jobs. Now data importing is basically done in two steps. Number one, first it gathers the necessary metadata for the data which needs to be imported. In the second step, Scoop submits map only job to the cluster. The actual data is then transferred using metadata that is captured. Then the corresponding imported data is saved in a directory in HDFS. I will show all these steps visually in a short while. So Scoop also provides a capability to the user using which he or she can specify an alternative directory where the file has to be populated. By default, it generates comma delimited fields and the records are separated by new line character. One can override this CSV format by specifying the record terminator character and the field separator in the scoop command explicitly. By default, scoop spawns four mappers, but you can increase or decrease this mapper count to run several tasks in parallel for faster processing. So let's go through the simple scoop workflow real quick. So on the left hand side, you can see that we have several data sources like relational databases as well as data warehouse systems, which contains data in some structured form. On the right hand side, we have Hadoop and related ecosystem technologies like HDFS, Hive, HBase, Pig, etc. Now there has to be some tool or technology or a mechanism using which you could transfer data from left to right as well as right to left. So Apache uh, Scoop comes into picture to perform that task. Scoop import transfers data from relational databases to Hadoop and Scoop export transfer data from Hadoop to relational databases. So here is how it works. First, user submits a scoop command or job to a client based application like command line interface. Scoop then tries to gather the metadata information of the tables, their column information, uh, like data types, column names, etc. So metadata is essentially data about data, which is gathered as a part of this first step. In the second step, it triggers the map only jobs. Now you might be wondering why no reduce jobs are triggered here. This is because we are just extracting the data from source system and loading it into target system. And since we are not doing any aggregations on this data, so we don't require reduce jobs to be triggered here. 
Now, as mentioned earlier, Scoop triggers four map tasks by default. So the entire data is distributed among these four map tasks so that data can be processed in parallel and in a faster way. Then these map task establishes connection with the relational databases using a JDBC connector. The actual data is then transferred to Hadoop using the metadata that is captured earlier. The data is written to HDFS in the form of a flat files. So let's consider you have a relational uh, table called customer and this table has four columns and 100 records. First, Scoop fetches the metadata of this table like four column names, their data types, number of records, etc. As a part of second step, Scoop then divides these 100 records into four equal parts with each 25 record data sets uh, assigned to these four map tasks. So in total, four into 25, 100 records. So essentially, map one task will get records from 0 to 25. Map 2 will get records from 25 to 50. Map 3 will get uh, records from 50 to 75. And finally, Map 4 will get records from 75 to 100. By default, Scoop will identify the primary key column if present in a table and use it as a splitting column. The low and high values for splitting values are retrieved from the database. Also, by default, all columns within a table are selected for import. Then these map tasks establishes connection with the relational database using JDBC connector, writing the data to STFS in the form of flat files. The default file format for scoop import is text file. You can select different file formats based on nature of data you have. The flat files are written into HDFS, has the naming convention like shown on the screen. And these files contain data whose columns are separated by comma and records are separated by new line character called slash n. So here is how a sample flat file looks like. In the next upcoming video, I will be explaining the scoop import command. So we will be writing down a scoop import command and we will be transferring data from relational database uh, like MySQL to uh, HDFS. I will also be explaining the different components of the scoop import command. So here is today's question. So can we transfer data from HDFS to relational databases using scoop? Please post your comments answers in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.